problem number seven. We want to evaluate each expression here. If possible, we want to do so by hand and give the exact answer. Now, the only way I could do that is if I see one of our nice ratios. For example, in part A, negative one makes me think, well, I should be able to just go to the unit circle and find a spot where the cosine function sends out a negative one. Now, cosine inverse only knows angles between 0 and 180. Is there a spot in there? And the answer is, yeah, right here. Here's the one and only spot where the cosine function would send you a negative one. And obviously, the angle there is pi radians, although we want our answers in degrees. So we would say 180 degrees. Looking down at letter E, there's another one where I'm thinking the unit circle is going to be the way to go. Let's see, between 0 and 180, where would I have a spot with an A coordinate of 0? This would be the only spot in that 0 to 180 section. That angle is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Let's see, another one that looks familiar to me. Cosine inverse negative one half. I think that's one of our familiar ratios. I wouldn't be drawing a unit circle picture this time. I'll make a reference triangle picture. Since the ratio is negative, I would go to the second quadrant. The cosine ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. And of course, this is just my 30, 60, 90 triangle. The reference angle here would be 60 degrees which means the angle I'm interested in would be 120 degrees. Those are the only nice ones I see. From the three remaining, letter D, when I look at that and I think, OK, I'm looking for a cosine ratio of 1.3, well, that's impossible. There is no such thing as a cosine ratio of 1.3. One is the highest, so this one is certainly undefined. And then the other two, letter B and letter F, those are good ratios. This one is a positive ratio less than 1. Here's a negative ratio between 0 and negative 1. But they're not nice, so I have no way to work these by hand. I'll have to go to the calculator. The first one is cosine inverse of 0.3498. So I'll type that one into the calculator. I am in degree mode. And it looks like my answer is 69.5 degrees. And then letter F, cosine inverse of negative 1 11th. We'll add that to the calculator. And that answer comes out to be 95.2 degrees. Both of those last two answers make sense. I had a positive ratio, so I ended up with a first quadrant angle in letter B. Here I had a negative ratio, and I ended up with a second quadrant angle in letter F. Problem number eight. We've got a triangle. We've got some of the pieces. We want to find angle beta. Let's draw ourselves a quick picture. So I've got a 25 degree angle here. So here's angle alpha. That's 25 degrees. And then I'm given the two sides that are connected to that. So I have side C, which is 7. I have a longer side over here, side B, which is 22. I'll finish off the triangle. Obviously, this would be side A, opposite angle alpha. Here's the angle I want, this angle beta right here. And this third angle would be angle gamma across from the C. So which of my scenarios is this? This would be SAS. I know two sides, and I know the angle in between. Well, the only way to solve an SAS problem is to start with the law of cosines. I don't know a complete pairing yet for the law of sines. And so I need to look up the version of the law of cosines that has the pieces in it that I know, the B, the C, and the alpha. And that version is the one that starts with A squared. So A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine alpha. I know everything here except for the A. So I can plug in all the information, solve for A, and I will have what I want. So this will be 22 squared and 7 squared minus 2 times 22 times 7 times cosine 25 degrees. And of course, I can get A by itself by just square rooting each side. 
I could clean up some of that stuff in the square root, but I don't really have to. I can just go to the calculator and type it in just like that. So I'm typing it in just like we wrote it down on the paper, ending with that cosine 25 degrees, and hit enter, and we'll have our decimal approximation for side A. I'm just going to write down a brief version of it now. I'll need to keep that number long in my calculations, but it's somewhere around 15.9. My next step in these SAS problems is to find the smallest remaining angle. We do that because we know it's acute, which means it will be very easy to use the law of sines. Remember, the inverse sine function only knows about angles between negative 90 and 90. So which would that be? Well, angle gamma is definitely the smallest angle in this triangle because it's opposite the smallest side. So I would find angle gamma next knowing that it is acute. I can set up a law of sine statements now that I have a complete pairing. So I can write sine of 25 degrees, the alpha divided by a, 15.9 dot 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 we'll say, equals sine of gamma, the angle I'm going to try to find, divided by 7, which is side C. I'm solving here for gamma. I'm going to get 15.9 sine gamma equals 7 sine 25. I'm going to divide by the 15.9. And then gamma is just inverse sine of that quantity right there, the 7 sine 25 over 15.9. So we'll put that into the calculator. 7 sine 25, and then we're dividing that by that 15.9 number. So I want to grab that. I don't want to use a rounded value there. And this comes out to be about 10.7 degrees. And of course, now I can finish this off easily. I know angle alpha. I know angle gamma. If I add those up and subtract from 180, I'll have angle beta. And I can see it was a good thing I did it in this order, because when I add these two things up, they don't add up to very much. It looks like 35.7. When I subtract, I am going to get an obtuse angle. So back on the calculator, we'll add in the 25 to that 10.7. And then we'll do 180 minus that answer. And here's angle beta, 144.3 degrees. That is the pattern to follow in an SAS problem. Problem number nine, another triangle to solve. This time we have all three sides given to us. So we have a long side and then a couple of sides that are a little bit shorter than that. We've got a 23 and a 29 and a 40. It says the largest angle is 99.9 .9 degrees. Well, that's got to be here because 40 is the longest side. So the biggest angle we know will go across from the largest side. That is an obtuse angle. I know then that the other two angles are acute. And we should be able to use that to our advantage. We just want to find the measure of the smallest angle. Let's see, this is A right here. That's the smallest side. Therefore, angle alpha would be the smallest angle. I know it's acute. I can find this in one step just using the law of sines. I have a complete pairing here, the 99.9 .9 degrees and the 40. So I can set that up as one ratio. And then the other one would be sine alpha divided by that 23. Cross multiply, divide by 40. Remember, we know this angle is acute, which means I can just directly use the inverse sine function to find it. And so all I need to do is type this in the calculator, and I'm done. Sine inverse 23 sine 99.9 .9 divided by 40. And that gives me 34.5 degrees. That is our final answer.